Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of September 23rd, 2018. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing week it is. We have an active sky playing out right now and an important one. Part of what makes it so active is the emotions that will be flowing thanks to an Aries full moon. This full moon will be speaking in harmony with Mars and Mars is the ruling planet of Aries. That means that the energies are that much more magnified. Now the sign of Aries has to do with things like entrepreneurship. It has to do with knowing yourself and knowing your power and acting from that place being willing to be independent. And it has to do with trusting our joy, especially our childlike joy, knowing that it will lead us somewhere good and that it is by pursuing joy that we find ourselves. Well, during a full moon, emotions tend to be especially heightened. So do passions and the sign of Aries is also a very passionate one. Speaking with Mars amplifies the passion that much more. Mars right now is continuing to move through the sign of Aquarius. And this is a part of the sky and a sign that has to do with humanitarian efforts. It has to do with the collective and thinking about how other people are beyond ourselves. But it is also a sign that is highly individualistic. It is very much about the individual and about being independent. So the two share a certain independent spirit. However, Mercury is standing across the sky from this Aries full moon and Mercury is newly late last week stepped into the sign of Libra. Now Libra is not so much about the self, but it is about considering other perspectives. It is about being gracious. It is about being diplomatic and finding a more balanced perspective. Whereas Aries is ruled by the planet Mars and those symbols have to do with autonomy and independence and, and trusting your own power and your own force and exerting yourself in the world. The sign of Libra is ruled by Venus, which is much more a receptive principle. It's much more about trusting your process, going with the flow, allowing yourself to feel and knowing that great things can come to you. They can just show up for you and that you are worthy of them. The sign of Libra is also an air sign. So it has a strong intellect to it. Whereas the sign of Aries is a fire sign. So again, that passion, that energy being magnified that much more. So think about it this way. A full moon is always the moon standing across the sky from the sun. You add Mercury to that in an air sign with the sun, amplifying the intellectual energies standing across the more instinctive energies that we have. And in the middle, forming what is called a T-square, we have Saturn. And Saturn right now is continuing to move through its home sign of Capricorn. And this is a sign and an energy of the planet that has to do with being more methodical. It has to do with having a larger range picture. It has to do with considering the legacy that we are creating in this moment. What is it that we ultimately are moving towards in the highest vision of our lives? Now, a T-square, as these planets will be forming, is not necessarily the easiest, most harmonious celestial combination that you are going to find. It is one of tension. It is one of motivation. And so as I look at this, I feel like a whole lot of us are going to be looking at where is that right balance between trusting ourselves and knowing that we can be autonomous, that we can be independent and considering other perspectives, knowing that we need other people. How does this fit into the goals that we have for our life and where it is that we want to go and what it is that we believe is worth achieving? What it is that is our individual definition of success? I think that is going to be one of the more interesting questions that a whole lot of people are going to be asking themselves. Would you define success as being independent, being on your own, going your own way, being pioneering? Those are all admirable qualities, but without 
a sense of people being on your side without a sense of having people to talk to to share with how much is it worth well a lot is going to depend on your own individual temperament and a lot also is going to depend on your chart and what's happening in the sky for you uniquely for you right now but as a collective i do think that we will all be considering this where is it that we need other people and where is it that we don't need anyone and how does that actually fit into creating a legacy how does that fit into our journey towards a greater self-respect towards keeping the promises that we make to ourselves these are all the things that saturn and capricorn represent but more importantly i do think that the planet saturn ultimately one of its highest goals as it transits our chart or where it is in our natal chart or in the sky is ultimately about helping us to understand that we alone are responsible for our own happiness I'm not saying accept things that aren't right. I'm not saying accept injustices in the world. But I am saying that regardless of where you are in your life right now and what you see around you, what hurts your heart, at the same time though, we can understand that there are actions that we can take to move ourselves in a direction that we think will make us happy. And ultimately, in many ways, a state of peace, a state of inner peace is a choice. There's a saying that faith without works is dead. Sometimes that's not the case, right? Sometimes it's, you know, a faith you can feel. If you feel it, you are it. You don't need to do anything. That's what Neptune says. That's what Jupiter says sometimes too. But Saturn says, if you truly have faith, you will take actions and your faith will show up in your actions. So what is that faith in? Yes, it can be in a divine energy, but that faith can also be in ourselves. That faith can be in each other, faith in an idea, faith in an inspiration. Where is it that you are in your life being asked to go beyond just a gut feeling, beyond just what someone else is advising you, someone's well-intentioned insight? And where is it instead, or in addition to, you can actually start moving yourself in a direction that feels that much more in alignment with some higher more loving vision for your life and somewhat more in alignment with the path that ultimately will lead you towards a greater sense of inner peace it is ultimately the things that we know we must do that allow us to be most at peace with ourselves so where is it in your life right now that you know that there is some action that you can take to affirm your peace and your happiness in the world well if it is right then you know that it is connecting to some very deep and honest place within yourself some innocent and kind place within yourself and it's also considerate of others as well to the best of your ability and it is in considering the other and the self finding that middle ground which is what saturn is representing in this larger conversation that the true way towards greater self-respect is found so all of us in at least one area of life are going to be on this journey now and especially as we start this week under the same sky as we start this week the sun will move into the sign of libra so happy birthday to all the libras out there your birthday month has begun and happy equinox to everybody out there as well you know normally we celebrate the equinoxes and the solstice on the 21st of their respective months it's the changing of the seasons that are marked by the position of the sun and normally we say the 21st of september is the equinox if you are in the northern hemisphere it is the autumn equinox if you are in the southern hemisphere it's the spring equinox however a calendar date is kind of arbitrary it's not exactly in alignment at all times with celestial phenomenon and what marks the equinox moment is the moment that the sun enters the sign of libra so that moment when the sun moves from 2959 of Virgo and into 000 of Libra, that is the equinox moment. And so that is something that we are celebrating as we start this week right out of the gate. 
and ultimately the equinox is a symbol of balance you know it's interesting because when i have been to europe i remember many years ago i was going to university there so i was kind of on a kick i wanted to visit as many of the ancient sites as possible i've always been into that and i remember going to, to stonehenge one year for the uh, summer solstice celebration it's always a big party i do think it's a bucket list thing everybody should do it june 21st at stonehenge in england it's it's an amazing party but what was interesting to me as i've traveled around and i've seen some of the ancient sites in europe is that many of them a whole lot of them the ones that i've seen have been aligned with the solstices so it's either the summer solstice or the winter solstice or both that are represented in some of these ancient and often sacred sites However, in the part of the world that I am in now, which is much more centrally located, it is the equinoxes. When you go to the ancient uh, sites, the archaeological zones, when you see the pyramids, they are aligned with the equinoxes. And I think that's a really interesting symbol in that equinox is a lot more about equal. It's a lot more about the equality of light and dark and it represents balance it represents a perfect harmony if you will but in these other climates when we go further up north i think that the solstices start to be emphasized more because it was when the sun was at its greatest power that uh, the harvest started to really reap and we started to experience a sense of greater warmth greater fruition as a result right greater fruits of our labors as a result of this growing heat whereas in other parts of the world it's the balance that allows uh, the greatest rewards to come about and so i share this with you because it is the equinox as we are starting this week and under the light of the equinox under the light of this perfection of the balance between light and dark I would invite you to consider no matter where you are on the planet right now where is it that you can embrace the light and the dark within you where is it that you can accept that with all the light that you have there is in addition to that dark you cannot have one without the other and where is it that you can more fully accept and love those parts of you that you'd rather keep hidden that you'd rather keep in the dark my hope for all of us is that we find that sense of healthy balance. And I do think that the sign of Libra, given that the energy that is growing in that sign this week, my hope is that all of us in our own lives consider how it is that we can be more fair and measured with ourselves, but also with each other as well. So speaking of the Libra energy, as the sun and mercury are newly in the sign of libra first mercury in the first half of the week and then the sun in the second half of the week these planets will be reaching out with saturn in a conversation of tension but also reaching out to mars in supreme harmony so i'm really excited about that mars energy with mars being in the sign of aquarius there's a sense here of talking to each other there's a sense here of being enlivened by ideas of seeing things differently of wanting to share and wanting to share more spontaneously as well and there's a sense here of wanting new experiences as well and being open to it these are all very exciting prospects thanks to mercury and the sun speaking in supreme harmony with mars on a more personal level this is just really great for being active in your own life for deciding what it is that you want to do and and exemplifying bravery and courage in the pursuit of it however the fact that these two planets are also going to be dancing with saturn this week as well tells me that we are on the one hand going to be aware of where it is that we need to pace ourselves that we may need to take a measured approach or we may need to trust the process to put in the time that will get us to those arenas those spaces in which we believe we'll fully be able to realize ourselves we'll fully be able to exercise our power and shine ever more brightly the truth is of course you don't have to be anywhere else other than where you are in order to uh, display the qualities about yourself that you like the most you can do that right now exactly where it is that you are 
but it is the Saturn connection also that invites us to do the work, to do the work that whatever it is that we are hoping to be or to achieve requires. Are you desiring to be a person at peace with yourself? Well, chances are that requires some work and the work required has to do with healing the past, releasing messages of doubt or of uh, messages that question your worthiness. Uh, it has to do with being fully present, right? These are the things that we do. These are the things that we practice in order to find peace in the present moment. If the goal is to be happy, well, what does that take? What part of you is leading you in a direction that knows that this is where you're going to find a happiness? This is where you're going to find a contentment. And are you willing to put in that time and put in that work? At the same time, it could be an outer goal, but it's never really about the outer goal. That's the thing. It's never about what you've achieved in terms of the success, in terms of the award, in terms of the credential. It's never about those things. What it is about is who you become in the process, who you allow yourself to become as you go through those lessons, as you learn what you need, but then you also apply it more personally. You apply it on levels that have to do with emotion have to do with spirit. You pay attention to your process because that is part of you becoming that type of person that could achieve that thing or acquire that success or secure that credential. It is always about the journey. It is never about the reward at the end of the journey. The reward truly is who it is that you become. And we show ourselves to others. I think that's a big part of what Libra energy is about as well. We show whom it is that we are in our moments. We reveal ourselves constantly to ourselves and to others. What is it that we really believe about ourselves, about others, about the world? Um, how is it that we treat each other? These are the things that most exemplify how it is that we treat ourselves that we hold ourselves as worthy or not worthy. You know, there's a, a saying, it's a little comical, but they, you know, they say, if you go out on a first date with somebody, look at how they treat the waiter. That will tell you everything about how decent this person is or is not. And you know, based on how it is that they treat the waiter, what is it that they are revealing about themselves? What is it that they believe about themselves and their worthiness? Is their sense of worthiness related to paying the bill? Is it related to uh, a whole bunch of other factors, the clothes that they're wearing? Or is it that they care about being a genuinely decent person to others because they are wanting to be genuinely decent towards themselves in their own private moments? That's how people reveal themselves, but they do it in so many different ways. It's sometimes okay to observe people, of course, but more importantly, I think if we observe ourselves without judgment, we will be led to some truth. Now, ultimately, given that Mars is beautifully aspected, what it tells me is that the truth that we find is one that empowers us, that empowers us not only to do the work towards whom it is that we desire to be, but to just be ourselves. That is a huge question. That is one of those, you know, eternal searches like, who am I? Well, it is a week like this. The full moon in Aries is about answering that question, who am I? But understand that it is just for a moment because you will be different in the next moment and the next. But it is all the Libra energy that says, if you are asking yourself, who am I? Well, look at the people around you. Look at the people that you like to relate to, that you spend the most time with. Look at how it is that you express yourself to people, especially one-on-one. -on -one and how it is that you allow other people to talk to you. These are the things that reveal to us ultimately whom it is that we believe ourselves to be. And my hope is with a sky like this and with the lessons that are gonna come up that we are more willing to embrace a self-concept that is grounded in love and kindness, that understands that yes, you are unique, but we all are unique. Yes, you are special, but none of us is special because all of us is special. And with that humility, that is when this energy truly becomes its very best, when we're able to make genuine connections with others, but still hold our truth 
and own our power. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you think about this week? What do you love about this week? What am I really excited about? It's gotta be that full moon. I'm so excited about that. I do think that Saturn connection, yes, it can make things a little bit uh, tense or it can make it feel like there's a lot to do and we must do it and we must push past resistance in order to meet deadlines. I do think that's gonna be part of this energy for a lot of people out there. And yet, I think that this is going to be very fulfilling. So what do you love about this week? What are you looking forward to? Please let me know in the comments below. I absolutely love reading you guys. I love interacting with you guys right here on YouTube, but also, of course, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I have been really enjoying uh, connecting with friends and fans in the social media space. Now you can find out what all this wonderful stuff this me week means for you and your sign by logging on to astrofabulous.com or nadiashaw.com. Sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes and so much more. All of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. I have events coming up online and in person. I have an online event very soon. So it is this weekend, no, it's the coming week, I think, uh, the Astrology Summit that is taking place, hosted by Astrology Hub. It is a free online summit where we look at astrology and raising consciousness and how the two connect. I had a really great talk with Amanda at Astrology Hub. I really enjoyed it. It was so fulfilling. And I'll be on their page doing a live stream at some point this week as well, or at least answering questions, part of a Q&A panel. So do check that out. There is a link in the description below and you can sign up uh, for that summit, that online summit for free. And you can enjoy all kinds of astrologers for free. Also, I have the synchronicityuniversity.com classes coming up. The next session starts really soon. It starts in about a week or two or so, depending on when you're watching this. The first Saturday of October is when it starts. And this coming session in the month of October, every Saturday, we will be getting together live online and learning together. And if you can join us live, that's great. If not, you can download the class afterwards to learn from infinitely. There's lots and lots of classes that I have taught before that you can download instantly at synchronicityuniversity.com. The classes that I will be teaching in the month of October are based on the most popular questions asked of any astrologer. So it'll be a lot of fun to look at whether it's for yourself or for the clients that you serve. We will be looking at uh, astrological signatures of long-term love, uh, luck and fortune in the astrology chart, life purpose in the astrology chart, and money and career in the astrology chart. So we'll be set to have a lot of fun Saturday afternoons, but that might be a different time for you because I know there are friends and fans all over the world who join us live and watch this on YouTube as well. And so there'll be the video afterwards. You can get the whole class. And so it's fun live and it's fun downloading it as well. In person, I have a few events coming up. So one is happening right here in Mexico in late January. So that's really exciting. Uh, and the link is below. It's being hosted by Maurice Fernandez, who has been on my channel before, who I interviewed as part of Synchronicity Web TV. His interview is on my YouTube channel. And in May, I know we're jumping a little bit ahead here, but look, all the way in May, save the date, Memorial Day weekend, I will be at in Seattle as part of the Norwalk conference. And just before that, earlier in May of 2019, I will be back in Vancouver. So I'm really looking forward to that as well. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much for this moment with you. Thank you for celebrating the sky. My genuine hope is with this powerful lunar energy, there's something here for just about everybody, something here that everyone can tap into to their advantage. I do think that the air and fire signs are going to find this energy a little bit more easier to access than others might. 
if you are a fire sign you're going to be using this energy to understand your joy and your passion and your place in the world if you are an air sign you will find this to be an especially social time where you are connecting with all kinds of people and being invited to lots of spaces as well if you are a water sign this energy will bless you most where it comes to matters of money and career and if you are an earth sign the energy here is truly profound it has to do with shifting your energy in meaningful ways and once the energy changes everything else changes that much more for the better i hope that you use this full moon energy very well i did talk about the full moon actually in the monthly horoscopes and they are on my youtube channel so you might want to watch that again to get some insights into what this very powerful full moon holds for us but regardless just look up enjoy it because i think that's part of one of the best things about being a stargazer is that it truly is this marvelous and beautiful show that is available to us and i always imagine that you know i think about the ancients just kind of hanging out hours and hours all night long sort of praying and meditating and doing rituals and staring up at the sky and mapping the sky and that's how they pass their lives and that knowledge that they gained has formed the foundation to what modern astrologers do now. And I think that's pretty incredible to be carrying on that tradition. And so anytime you look up at the sky and you contemplate what it means for you and your life, you are part of that tradition. You are ensuring that that tradition continues to live on. But I also think that it is human nature. It is one of the most natural things that we do and have done in history and in our modern world is to look around us and to look up and experience wonder thank you again for watching it'll be a great week enjoy